Hey folks, Sega Sonic fan here. Today we're looking at the T-962A reflow oven. Uh, let's see if I can give you a better look of it here. Look at it. This is what it looks like on the outside. This is your panel and the LCD display and all. I've got this taken apart already. I might edit later um, into the video the screws you're supposed to get to. But it's actually really straightforward. There's uh, two screws. The only ones that are kind of hard to get to are these two that are on the inside of the lip. And then there's a bunch of screws on the back panel. Um, you don't need to get the four that are holding in the large fan or the one that's holding in the relay. And uh, and then there's these little uh, these little clips to get inside this thing um, to get the tray out. This is the tray. And at least with this model, all you have to do is pull down on the uh, plastic tab, if you can see that right there. Pull down that tab on both sides and then this will just slide right out. So now that we've got the thing all opened up, I'm going to go over a little bit more of the hardware here. There's actually a fair amount of documentation on these, which is how I came across this mod in the first place. Um, however, a lot of the documentation is really lacking with regards to the hardware and how it works and where the solder points are. Um, there's a large focus on the custom firmware, which is really cool and really awesome. But I'd like to take some time to talk about the hardware and kind of what's, what's really going on here with this circuit board um, and what tools and materials you might need. So it's really, um, some of it will, a lot of it will be rehashed compared to some of the other videos and some of the great information that's on GitHub. Um, I'll try to post some of those links in my video. And in the meantime, um, hopefully some of you find this helpful for anyone that might be stuck just the way I was working on this. Um, hopefully this will shed some light. On oh, my tripod just fell. Hopefully this will shed some light, uh, some much needed light on this, uh, this modification here. Get my uh, camera situated best I can anyway. Yeah, so hopefully this will help shed some light um, on doing this this mod for people. So I'm going to do a little quick rundown of the uh, main PCB board here. I think that'll benefit a lot of people, hopefully. Now this is the T962A model. I can't really speak for the other models because uh, this is the only one I've ever worked on. Um, there are some differences, and I think the main difference with the T962A is that there's the uh, Kaplan tape instead of masking tape over the uh, reflow area. But first thing you want to do is, is really undo a lot of this hot glue that's everywhere. Um, and uh, so you just use a piece of a pair of needle nose pliers. Nothing too fancy. And once I do that, we'll be able to actually get a much better look at what's going on on this circuit board too. Since this hot glue is ah, kind of everywhere. And what's nice too is this board's actually pretty well labeled. And it's a pretty simple design. And once you do this mod, I think it's really cool to have the custom firmware on here. I was definitely excited with the other one I worked on. Alright, so we got pretty much all our glue off here. And this is, a lot of it is just from observation from the last one I worked on as far as what does what. And things are kind of nicely labeled here too. Um, so it's just going to be a rough, rough uh, explanation here. So you have a two pin plug right here. And a three pin plug over here. And another two pin plug right here. Um, let's break down what these connectors are and what they do. Um, you also have two plugs over here. Um, presumably, this ribbon connector here, if we can see that, maybe I'll try to tilt the camera up a little. The ribbon connector at the very top is for the LCD display. Uh, this connector right here is for the, um, the epoxy chips and whatever's going on for that. That might actually be just a, 
these might actually just be ICs. Um, I don't know if you can actually see those. Um, but the, the separate board to the left here, uh, let's try to tilt the camera up so we can see. This board right here, um, these chips and this whole board might actually be just uh, an, LD, an LCD display driver board, um, is my guess. Though it could have some of the components necessary to uh, do the reflow calculations. I kind of doubt it. I'm guessing most of that's done with this microcontroller right here. Um, but let's discuss on a power level what goes on. So this connection right here um, looks to me like it goes to the power transformer. There's a small power transformer on the back that um, is just a, a really simple really simple power transformer. And then these diodes right here more than likely are going to be your bridge rectifier, um, which then knocks down the voltage a little bit lower, probably something around 12 or 14. You have these two caps that are bypass filter caps um, for the AC to DC rectification stage. This is a 470, this is a 1000 microfarad. They're both rated at 25 volts. What's interesting is the PCB actually shows this capacitor as being rated at 1000 microfarads. So they actually cut that in half uh, on a later revision. And then you have this LM2575. Uh, it's a standard, uh, I believe it's a step-down regulator. Um, it's a 5 volt step-down regulator and that's going to be for powering um, pretty much everything in the logic side of things. Um, you have a 3.3, of course, for the 3.3 volt logic. So that 5 goes to the 3.3, and then that goes to everything else that needs 3.3. So that's kind of your main you know, DC power stage, and that's where that's all coming from. So if you're going to be flashing this thing, you really need to have this connector plugged in for sure. However, a lot of the videos tell you to have this 3-pin connector plugged in in the back here, this one which to me just seems incorrect. I guess I'll find out when I work on this one. But this oven turns on when you're flashing it, which is really dangerous. And I believe that's due to this connector being connected. And this is actually printed right on the board. It says AC220, or in my case, it's going to be 110, 120. Um, and so there's no, there's no need for that. Like, there, there shouldn't be any need for that, um, for this model anyway, because... Um, that 220 or that that uh, wall supply, the AC wall supply there, um, would only be used for as a heating element, which is what we want to actually disconnect while we're flashing this. Um, this one's labeled fan, so obviously we don't need that either. And then this connector right here goes to the fan that's uh, in the case, the smaller fan, the really loud one. Uh, this connection in the middle. It's kind of a mystery to me. Let's follow it and see where that goes. I'm thinking that might be the relay. Ah, yes, and that is the relay. So we can unplug that as well. Um, so really, the way these instructions should be telling you is that you only need one thing plugged in, and it should just be this connector right here. We'll find out if we need the 3-pin, because that's what the instructions that I read previously said but I'm guessing it's really only this, because this 3-pin, unless it has a pass-through to the transformer, which I doubt it does, um, shouldn't be needed to do the flashing. Uh, so the other things are the solder points. There's a 4K7 resistor, 4.7K resistor, that goes uh, from C20 to R2. Uh, the videos that I've seen don't actually tell you that, they just show you pictures. So I'm telling you, there's a C20 and R2, and it goes across those. Um, then you grab it from the R2 point and feed that to the middle pin of your digital temperature sensor, which in this case is a, a Mauser DS18B20. Um, there are some equivalents that you can get that are slightly cheaper, but I'm going to use this one for now. Um, and the only difference between the cheaper models is a slight difference in the temperature resolution of about half a degree. So, and, and that's only at like very high temperatures too. So what you're going to need is uh, obviously your temperature sensor. The other two pins should get bent together like so. And you're going to solder these and connect these to ground. And that middle pin is going to go to the other side of the R2 pad. In addition to that, I'm going to do the fan mod to cool this one down um, or to get it to not run so fast and so loud basically the, the case fan here 
And I guess there's a there's an unused digital pin that the custom firmware uh, makes use of, and that is AD0, um, which I'm assuming is the through hole via right here that has some exposed area. Um, and so I'll solder a wire to that, and that will be your essentially your on and off switch for turning off the fan, um, since that can't turn on off the fan by itself, because the fan would have way too much current for a simple digital pin like that, you use a MOSFET. In this case, it's a 2N7000, but any MOSFET will work. It can be an N channel or a P channel, um, so long as the gate uh, goes to AD0, and then the source goes to whatever your source is. And this is an NPN, so in this case, it's ground. And the drain goes to the negative side of your fan. So you just cut the wire here, the negative wire of your fan, and have it go to um, to your drain on your 2N7000. Um, and that that's really it for the hardware side of things. When you get into programming, um, there are instructions online for this pin header and the labeling of it and what does what and all that. Um, and basically there's uh, two pins. There's an IS, I believe pin 1 is NISP and pin 2 is N reset. And those are the ones that you use to go into the bootloader mode. And then the two after it are um, RX and uh, TX. Um, I don't know the order of those two. I don't remember off the top of my head. But um, those will go to a 3.3 volt programmer, like this one, to program it. And um, as far as programmers go, I'm, I'm still kind of a noob, so I'm not going to be able to give you a ton of useful information on this other than what I learned from the instructions myself. But um, hopefully this hardware rundown gives you a little bit more info. And then I will be back to show the programming sequence and how it works. Again, I'm just going to be relaying what I learned um, in doing this process myself from other people. But um, the hardware stuff, people haven't really clarified some of these connections and what they're doing, so that's why I thought I'd mention that. Um, and uh, what else is there to say about the hardware? Uh, this is your your uh, piezo buzzer. That's, that's where you get your loud beeps from. And uh, this, this screw terminal connection right here, these two wires um, are the actual temperature sensors that are inside the oven. I wouldn't really mess with those. Um, they're actually um, thoroughly glued into the, into the hood of the oven here. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, so anyway, I will be back um, after I do more hacking on this and um, show my results.